people it's your boy the laugh king coming at you with another video and in this video i'm just going to talk about some little things about nba live 19 that some people may not be talking about uh, i'm also going to be doing a breakdown of what i think is going to happen in this nba season uh, mainly like awards and stuff like that uh, i'm going to talk about mainly the eastern conference because i really don't care much for the west because you know, I'm a Pacer fan and I just, I'm more into the seeding on what team is going to finish where in the East and who the Pacers are going to match up against with uh, come playoff time. So, because the West, you know, they already got LeBron, they got uh, the Golden State, they got LeBron, they got all the stars over there, so everybody's going to be watching them, so I don't really care. The only teams I really care about in the West is Golden State. I've been down with them since the We Believe era when they beat Dallas. People thought Dallas was going to win that series when they haven't beaten Golden State all year. And I was like, nope, they're going to get beat like crazy because they haven't done it all year. <laughs> so, um, and Utah is another team in the West that I'm actually intrigued about. So, uh, mainly because Donovan Mitchell's on there. Other than that, I, I don't really care much for the, for the West. Maybe the Blazers because Damian Lillard, but that's pretty much it, man. I'm, a, I'm an Eastern Conference basketball guy, and I'm so happy LeBron James is in the West. So now the East can just focus on basketball and none of those bullshit uh, stories and drama and all that stuff that was plaguing the, the basketball uh, stories in, over the last couple of years, few years, I should say, so it's kind of refreshing that we can just get to the basketball and just focus on the basketball in the Eastern Conference now and, um, you know, save all that stuff for, you know, the Western Conference. Man, one thing that bothers me, though, is that, like, I was watching the Pacer game, the preseason game, and they were still bringing up LeBron James on ESPN. It's like, man, like, we don't care anymore. Like, we're not in the Western Conference. We don't care about LeBron being over in LA like I'm trying to focus on what's going on in this game right here so uh, that's that's my take on it um, I'm gonna get to more later on uh, this is kind of like a unscripted podcast that I'm gonna do I kind of felt like doing it since it's media day not media day but it's NBA um, it's the first game the first day of the season you know we got the Celtics and we got uh, who the hell are they playing? The Sixers, and then we got Golden State and OKC. So I'll be tuned into those games. If you want live updates and all the trash talking and stuff, follow me on Twitter at the Live King. I always live tweet uh, uh, the games, so it's gonna be fun. Now I'm gonna some of my thoughts on NBA Live 19, uh, even NBA Live 20, where I feel the game should be going is that if, if you guys noticed that over the last couple of days, um, I've been posting a lot of FIFA, I've been posting a lot of NHL um, gameplay, mainly because, like, well, I love NHL. Don't, don't get me wrong, I love NHL. That's one of my favorite EA Sports games. But FIFA is just like, like, I'm starting to post a lot more FIFA on here because the game is actually fun. And the reason why I feel that NHL and FIFA uh, are above NBA Live in terms of gameplay is mainly because the the ball and the puck, you know, it has a mind of its own. So what you guys don't, what you guys might not realize is that a few years ago, NBA, not NBA, NHL and FIFA, they actually brought in specialists to deal with the uh, the realistic movements of the ball, so the puck has its own a mind of its own, the ball has its mind of its own, and the overall flow on how you can control the tempo in the game is to me is is better than both Madden and NBA Live. Now, when people are talking about you know the game is stiff and all that stuff. You have to realize that if you play these other games, 
like mainly NBA Live. Um, why do I keep saying NBA Live? Mainly NHL and FIFA. You will notice that the animations look the same, right? Like a lot of people are looking at NBA Live and then they're looking at 2K and they see that 2K has some fluid motion here and there. The gameplay for 2K to me is stiff to, uh, this year anyway, but if you look at some of the initial movement in 2K, it actually looks realistic on top of the way they um, skin their players and the way the atmosphere, atmosphere and stuff like that looks. So that's why they're pretty much saying that the game is like stiff and robotic and blah, blah, blah. But if you play NBA, <laughs> I keep saying NBA, but if you play NHL and FIFA, you will notice that the animation quality are the same towards NBA Live. The only difference is the park has its a mind of its own and the, the soccer ball has a mind of its own. Now, if NBA Live takes the time and actually brings in a specialist, just do what those games have been doing. Uh, I'm not saying NHL is perfect because, you know, that game has its issues too, but we're talking about just gameplay alone. And if you if, if NBA Live just goes in and brings a specialist and gets the ball moving similar to what FIFA is doing um, with their interactions because think about it a lot of the, the moves and stuff like that that's in the game in FIFA you can pretty much control where the ball goes so you can like you know maneuver around your player and uh, move around the defender and, you know, you can still somewhat have control of the ball. Like, NBA Live is slowly getting there with the, um, with the nutmegs and stuff like that. But we need it at, like, I won't say 100%, but I'll say, like, 80% maximum for next year. Just so we can have more uh, live balls and more unpredictability in the game. Because, to me, in order for them to take that extra leap, the gameplay has to be somewhat unpredictable. Now, the game was good at launch, but then they had to go deal with a lot of the complaints and stuff of the community, so they had to go and uh, mess with the gameplay a bit. So I think the gameplay is still good. Um, I released a slider set that actually, like none of the games that I've played with those sliders have been blowouts. It's been straight competitive, like, chess matches so if you're looking for that i'm gonna leave the link in the description and you know you can give them a try so but I, all I, I all i've heard was positive feedback on them so you know give them a try if you want and let me know uh what you guys think about it but like i said man the gameplay um when you compare fifa and nhl to nba live the main difference is uh, the collisions, uh, which I hope live adds more off-ball collisions, not just like in the half court, but all over the court, right? Like if a player, I remember what game was it? The triple play um, baseball game back in the day. They actually had collisions where, you know, if you're not paying attention and, you, and two of your teammates are going after the ball, you would collide with your teammate and you know the ball would bounce and it will give the uh the offensive team um you know momentum to go to more bases and stuff like that should be an nba live if they want to add more and more to the realism of the game and i'm not talking about simulation like i really don't care about simulation like to me simulation like i said in my video is simulation is more of a handcuff on improving a game like you have to have, you have to be able to control pace, and you have to be able to control the tempo to your favor in order to beat your opponent. It's not about you know walking the ball up the floor with the game speed on 40, and um, you know running plays every time down. Because if you watch Western Conference basketball, none of these teams pretty much run heavy sets. You might see that in the East, but in the West, nope. So, and. Um, they also need to worry about um, the after timeout uh, play calling too. So that stuff is all in the game. It's just that, you know, people don't use them because they don't feel that they have a need to use them. So, like I said, if they make the, if they were able to make this game more unpredictable 
And I think the way they can do that is by giving the ball a mind of its own. Similar to a bounce tack in uh, NBA Live 14, like that should have been like the pinnacle of where they were going to go with the game. But, you know, they, they were getting away from canned animations and now they brought it back. So a lot of the stuff to me will probably be easier in a sense if they would actually, you know, just focus if the ball had a mind of its own. So, like I said, man, I'm playing FIFA and, and like all the tactical stuff that they put in the game where you can play wide and, you know, the opponent has to adjust to your game and you have to adjust to your opponent's game. That's why I feel that this year's FIFA is just like one of the best games they've ever released because, you know, it's all about tempo and NBA Live is there. It's just that that unpredictability is something that I'm really want, hoping that they, um, they put into the game because it will create a whole new um, dynamic playing online, playing against the CPU. Uh, it's, it's just more, it's just more um, tactical base, I should say. More, not simulation, but you can control what you, you can, you can control your style of play. And at the end of the day, that to me, that's what I think this game should be at. Like, so if you want to run off of, off an of inbound uh, and just go to the rim, that should be your style of play, right? It shouldn't just be, okay, the Warriors play like this, so you're going to have to play like this. No, it's how you use that team based on their strengths and weaknesses. And... I think if NBA Live actually follows that blueprint of what FIFA is doing, FIFA and NHL, because in NHL, man, if, if a team is sit, sitting back in the 1-3-1 in the trap zone, in the neutral zone trap, like, you're going to have to, ch you can't just go in um, in the zone uh, puck carrying. You have to dump it in and chase, and you have to find ways to get around that defense. And I'm just hoping NBA Live can get to that level, so... I'm going to leave it at that for the NBA Live segment. Uh, if I forgot anything else, I, hopefully I remember before I finish up this, uh, this podcast. But, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm going to leave it at. So I'm going to talk about uh, some stuff in the NBA. Um, basically my picks for, like, most improved and stuff like that. I actually have it written down, so let me read off of it. For my MVP award, I'm not going to give a clear-cut runner because it's still early, but uh, maybe I'll do another podcast maybe in January, February, just to give my, just to see where the race is going and stuff like that. But for MVP, my top three candidates are going to be uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, mainly because, you know, he was working with Kobe in the offseason and he's basically unstoppable at the rim, but now he's he's actually going to um, be shooting jump shots and stuff like that. And plus, they got Brook Lopez to open that floor, Ersan Ilyasova. You know, he has a, a chance to be really good this year with all that space. So, and I, I'm more interested to see how he play makes too, because he's more of a finisher. So I'm trying to see if he, if he's uh, if his assist numbers are gonna go up too. Uh, my next pick would be Kawhi Leonard. I don't think he'll get the MVP award, mainly because he's in a contract year. And I think the NBA, they don't want to give uh, those type of awards to players. Same, same reason why they didn't give Kyle Lowry and Lance Stevenson a few years ago all-star uh, bids, because they were both in contract years. And if they made the all-star game, uh, if they made the all-star team, they could add that to their resume and ask for a lot more money. So I don't. I, I think Kawhi Leonard will be up there in the MVP uh, voting or the MVP race, mainly because that defense in Toronto is going to be so ridiculous. Like, like he's going to teach those guys to talk on defense and everything. So he's going to get that team to to really really play out there and. You know, a lot of people were skeptical on if he was going to, like, even show up in Toronto. But, like, me living in Toronto and seeing all the stuff that's being talked about here, it's just like, 
yo, he's this guy is gonna be he's gonna be like MVP, Finals MVP Kawhi this year. So don't sleep on those Raptors. Everyone's talking about the Sixers and the and the and the Celtics, man. That Raptor team is it's gonna be crazy, man. Cause they can score, they can still score with anybody, even though they lost the Rosen. You know, that ball's going to be moving, so... And then that defense is going to be crazy. You can't just ISO on that team, man. It's too much length and everything. But anyways, my third MVP candidate is going to be Anthony Davis. If he can get that team to at least a four seed in the West, I would say fifth seed, five and four. I don't know if they'll ever... If they're going to be that good to even get that high. Uh, they should just give it to him because that guy is going to be a monster, man. You see how Westbrook averaging a triple-double and all that stuff, and people are like, oh, he Westbrook this, Westbrook that. Anthony Davis can average a triple-double. And he can, he can do it with like 25, 15, and like, I don't know how many assists he can get, but even if he doesn't get, like, say he gets eight assists or whatever, that guy can still block his, get blocked shots. So... But I, I doubt he'll average, like, two blocks a game. Because I think the average last year was, like, 2.1 or something. And that was Rudy Gobert. And, and the next was, like, Miles Turner or something like that. So, I, I'm, I'm going to put Anthony Davis in that conversation. Now, they're probably going to put LeBron in there. Because if they make the playoffs after all these years, they're going to be like, oh, you're going to have to give it to him. Oh, he's in L.A. No, I think, I think this is just like a warm-up year for LeBron in the West. Uh, next year is the real test, depending on who they get. Apparently, they're looking at Anthony Davis, but I doubt they're going to get Anthony Davis. A lot of people don't want to play in L.A. They'd rather play, like, you know, in a market where they feel that they can be the man. Like, all the alphas, they don't want to play under LeBron James. So, Paul George is a different story, but... That's a conversation for another day, but he, Russell Westbrook and Paul George actually play well off each other, so it made sense for Paul George to stay in OKC just off of that alone, so now there's no mellow, I think OKC can make a lot of noise, so like Russell Westbrook is going to do his thing, Paul George is going to do his thing, and that defense is going to be crazy too, all right, so defensive player of the year, I'm going to go with... Uh, you know, since I don't think they're going to give Kawhi the MVP, I think they're going to give it's going to be uh, between Kawhi and um, Rudy Gobert again. Because Rudy Gobert, he makes that, that guy is just, he just makes that defense so much better. And he has the same kind of impact that Kawhi is going to have in Toronto. Because Toronto's defense was good last year. But man, like, you got OG and you got. <laughs> And you got Kawhi on the perimeter guarding your guys, man. Don't, and then you got Ibaka and Valanciunas. And then CJ Miles, he, he knows how to play some, uh, some defense. Like, he'll do whatever it takes to, for the team to, um, you know, to be successful and stuff like that. So that team is going to be scrappy and the, the defense is going to be, it's going to be top five. So I think the Jazz and the Raptors are going to both have top five defenses. Uh, OKC... They're, I think they're going to have top 5D because they got Nerlinda Wells, too, that's going to be coming off the bench. So it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be an interesting year for defense in the NBA because a lot of these teams over the years, they didn't play no defense, right? Like in the West, you really had just Golden State and San Antonio. Like OKC's defense was all right, but I think this year they're going to take that, that leap. Uh, for Rookie of the Year... I'm going to go with DeAndre Ayton because, number one, he's going to be starting and he's going to have Booker and he's going to have Trevor Ariza right there. So he's going to have a lot of space to work with. Um, he's a big guy and he's already knocking down jump shots and everything. Like, he's going to be a beast. And they might be, Phoenix might be a dark horse to make the playoffs, but I'm going to get to that later. But um, I'm going to give it to Aiton. Like, uh, he's, he's pretty much going to have, uh, maybe Knox. Maybe I'll put Knox up there too, depending, uh, depending on what the Knicks do. But um, DeAndre Aiton, man, like he's been impressive in, in preseason. And it's going to be crazy to see, like, how, how he, because all the, real, there's really no bigs in the West. 
and he's it's kind of like when Embiid got um Embiid became healthy and all the uh, all the teams in the NBA had all these finesse bigs and Embiid was just bullying all of them like this guy was just manhandling them so I think it's going to be like that in the West because the West doesn't really have that many bigs right like who does Golden State have like they don't really have any bigs uh, Houston got uh, Capella but I don't know Capella's he's he's just more of a shot blocker than a really a defensive type player but I don't know, man. Aiden, he's gonna, he, he's gonna. He, I think he's gonna have a sick year, man. Like, there's nothing. There's, like, Phoenix need to do something because that team, like, they have such a good branding, and they have some good players on the team. They were pretty good when Bledsoe was on there a few years ago, and I don't know. They just became. They're just. They're like. They're kind of like the Knicks of the of the West, man. They just became like a laughing stock, and you know. Them having this pick with DeAndre Ayton, they got Booker, they got Ariza. I'm trying to remember who else they got on their team. Uh, they have some good uh, pieces on the team, so I, we'll see where it goes. But DeAndre Ayton is going to be my pick for Rookie of the Year. I don't think it's going to be close. Uh, let me see. Six Man of the Year. I don't really know. I don't really care about Six Man of the Year. Uh, most Improved. Um... I'm gonna give it to Markel Fultz, mainly because I don't. Well, I don't know if he's if he's gonna be eligible because they might put him as a rookie. But uh, I think Markel Fultz, like, I don't know what to expect with him this year. Uh, but he's gonna have to do a lot more than what he did last year because Philly's definitely gonna need his his offense. They can't rely. They're not gonna rely on uh, Jared Bayless and some of those other guys. So. You know, Fultz was a, a, a top pick from a year ago. He was injured most of the year with his jump shot. So I think they're going to actually, um, I think they're actually going to use him a lot more. I don't know if he's going to be with the ball in his hands, but he might be more of a finisher if he plays alongside um, Ben Simmons. So I'm going to give him for six man of the year. Uh, I think he has a lot to prove this year too. I think Philly's success is going to be amplified this year. So they're going to have to look at Philly to give them something. So I don't know if MB is going to be in the MVP voting, but he might be up. He might be top five, depending on what the Sixers do. But for most, for, for, for most improved player, I'm going to go with uh, Markel. I could even say Zach Levine. But Zach Levine's been in the game for a long time, but... Zach Levine, he's like, to me, that guy's a special player because once healthy, that guy can close games. Like, he was closing a lot of games in, in Minnesota. He was hitting game winners and stuff like that. So, I don't know how good the Bulls are going to be. A lot of people don't have them in the playoffs, but they're probably going to be at least in the, in the between the 10 to 12 range. So, it's, it all depends down the line on how many games uh they're out of the uh the final eight seed uh come to when it comes down to the last month of the nba so we'll see because zach levine got a lot of talent man a lot of people sleeping on zach levine so i'm i'm gonna put i'm, put, I'm gonna put my hat in for zach levine but markel fultz is really my number one pick uh coach of the year i'm gonna have to go with uh coach bud in milwaukee because that team, like, like I said, there's a lot riding on that team. Uh, Giannis, um, you know, he's he's looking to take that next step as an NBA superstar. They got Brooke Lopez. Uh, he was making them, Coach Bud was actually making them relevant, uh, making the Hawks relevant for a long time in Atlanta. So, and he might have more talent in Milwaukee. Maybe not. Cause those guys had like four all stars in uh in Atlanta, so but we'll see, man. Because I don't know, I, I just a lot of people they don't really like Milwaukee, you know. Milwaukee's kind of a sleeper team, but um, you know, some people have them finishing over Indiana, they have some people have them in the third seed in the east, 
right? But I don't know if they're going to finish better than Boston, Philly, or Toronto. So I say within the four, four, uh, four to six seed, I think you'll see Milwaukee. Most people have Indiana at five, which I think is reasonable. But like I said, if Indiana didn't cough up a lot of games last year, those guys could have been the third seed last year. So, But I think Coach Bud is going to take that team to another level. Like, Milwaukee has to do something. Like, they're another team in the East that, you know, they've had a lot of, um, they've had a lot of, what do you call it? They had a lot of ups and downs and stuff like that, bad coaching. And, you know, I think they're another team that's, that's looking to make that leap. So I'm going to give it to uh, Coach Bud for Coach of the Year, so. And my sleeper teams in the for both Eastern and Western Conference, I'm gonna have to go with uh, in the West. I'm gonna have to go with Denver, and I'm gonna have to go with uh, I have the Phoenix Suns. So the reason why I say Denver because to me Denver is firepower. The way they play. I really want to see them in the playoffs because they can give any team in the end for a four, four game, uh, seven game series, those guys can give team fits, right? Like if they play, say they play like Houston or something like that, those guys can counter Houston, man. It's just that the defense is never there. But they got DeAndre Ayton, man. Like, so depending on his health and depending on what they do, uh, this year, if they can squeeze in and get that eighth seed and play a top seed, I don't think they'll get to. Um, I don't think they'll get to seven. But Golden State, I know everybody has them at number one. I don't. I don't know, man. I don't like that bench that they have in Golden State, but they have the talent. And when they get um, what's his name, uh, they get Demarcus Cousins back. Uh, that's when you really have to see how this team is going to play. They're going to Golden State is going to be Golden State. Right, but I just don't think they're 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 tough, right? Like they can they can they got the firepower in the defense, but I think that that bench is the is something you really gotta look at. So, but I'm getting off topic. So yeah, the Nuggets and the Suns are my two sleepers in the West, in the East. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say Cleveland is one of my sleeper teams. They're not as bad as you know, when LeBron left the first time, you know, people are hating on Jordan Clarkson. They're hating on, you know, Rodney Hood and stuff like that. But like I said, man, those players were playing pretty good before LeBron, before they got to uh, play under LeBron. So I don't know if they're going to be good defensively, but all I know is like if you ever watch Cleveland teams, regardless of the, they, they always play somewhat hard, like. So they got a lot of blue-collar guys there. J.R. Smith is, is going to be J.R. Smith. He's going to be clutch if the game is close. Kevin Love is another underrated player. They, they still have an all-star in Kevin Love. And if Kevin Love can stay healthy, like he can get, we can get Minnesota. Kevin Love, when he was dropping like 30-30 games and stuff like that, you got Tristan Thompson banging down low. I think they can get to that eight seed, man. I don't know, man. Like, some people are just laughing because LeBron left. I'm like, this is not the same situation. And uh, I want to give another team, but I'm not sure, man. I want to say Charlotte, but every year I say Charlotte's going to make the playoffs. They end up being a disappointment. They do have Tony Parker, so we'll see. But Tony Parker's old now, so I don't know, man. Let me see, let me let me go through some teams. Let me see who who can possibly be a, um, you know an upset team in the East or, or a sleeper team in the East. I don't want to say upset team, but uh, maybe I'll go with Chicago. Maybe I'll go with Chicago. Cleveland. They got Cleveland finish at eleven. Brooklyn. Not, I don't know about Brooklyn. I don't know that they have them 10th. I don't know about that. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Chicago. I'm gonna go with Chicago. Charlotte. I'll, I'll go with three teams. I'll say Cleveland. I'll say um, Chicago, and I'll say Charlotte. 
those will be the three teams that I think will uh, that are sleepers in the East. And I think that it's possible for any of those teams to make the playoffs. I don't know about uh, – I'm not going to do a one to eight. A lot of people are doing it. But um, it's not my thing anymore. I used to think about it. But then you just like – I don't know. I, I just want to see it play out. I don't want to be, I don't want to guess to see where certain teams are going to fit and stuff like that. You know, I'm, nah, I'm not going to do that anymore. So what are your thoughts on, you know, the upcoming NBA season? Uh, what teams, uh, what, what are your sleeper teams? Who do you think is going to be MVP? You know, put all that down in the comment section. This is a 30-minute video of me just rambling about the thing I love, basketball, man. I love NBA basketball. I told myself I'm going to scale back this year because last year I actually, um, I actually, you know, invested a lot of time in the NBA. And when the Pacers lost in that first round, that took so much out of me because, you know, I really wanted that team to beat Cleveland. It was possible for them to beat Cleveland. And, you know, I just said, you know what, I got to scale it back. So I usually watch WNBA in the, in the off season, but I didn't want anything to do with basketball, man, like nothing. So I'm going to end the podcast on, on that note. Uh, if you want to see more podcasts, um, you know, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, sometimes if I feel like doing this, I'll just talk. I might start streaming a lot more just to talk basketball and maybe play NBA Live too. Uh, the way my streaming is set up for right now, it's not streaming friendly. So as most of you know, I did that five hour stream and live came out. So it's definitely possible for me to start streaming more, but you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see where this goes. Uh, I might start streaming to talk basketball. Because, you know, a lot of people, you know, sometimes you just want to have a conversation. So, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm out of here. Y'all enjoy the NBA season. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to talk basketball because that's all I do on there. And um, I'm out. Peace. I got a confession. I possess the God particle. Lock me up for possession. The relationship with God should be great for proper protection. If I am the show and prove, ain't no need to ask me no question. The segregation real, you should probably stay in your section.